Hi everyone, another short explainer video here for resources that you'll find for free on the Pain and Quality of Life Integrative Research Lab's website at pearlresearch.com. You'll see that I've gone to the website here. I've clicked on clinician resources uh, across the top banner. Here you'll see the growing list of free resources that are available for you to use in your clinical practice. Today we're going to talk about the seven point radar plot. Now this is something that for any of you who have ever taken uh, in one of my courses, either uh, the Comprehensive Pain Assessment on my own or the Assess, Predict, Treat workshops that I do with uh, Dr. Jim Elliott from the University of Sydney, uh, you will be familiar with the seven-point radar plot. Uh, for those who have not taken this, let me explain quickly what this is. If we tap on that, we're going to be jumped right down to the page to where we can open up a blank copy of that radar plot. I've done so already here on this tab. Now this is an example of a radar plot, to be fair, which you'll see here are seven points around the edge that all could be potential drivers of a pain experience for your patient. The use of a radar plot is intended to provide a, a guide for clinical decision making. For those who work especially with people with complex pain problems, you can recognize that it gets quite challenging to try and understand and interpret all the different inputs or influences on a patient's pain experience. And especially as the research continues to evolve, we get all sorts of, of weird and wonderful sort of directions that we could go with trying to understand our patient's pain experience. And it can become quite challenging, quite complicated to try and keep that all in, in, in your head, in your mind, as you start to build sort of a phenotype or a profile of your patient. The radar plot really is just meant as a guide, as an aid for that. Uh, the idea here being that uh, there are different um, indicators, clinical indicators, that might lead you to believe there's a stronger driver from, from one or more of these different domains. To be fair, it would be rare that you get just a single domain as a strong driver of a patient's pain experience, but perhaps if you see signs that are all pointing toward a strong nociceptive driver or a strong emotional driver, you can start to build a plot or a profile that helps you identify sort of the you know, the biggest window to jump through, if that makes sense, the place to start with your patient's pain experience. So let me just jump over to a, a quick video here to show you exactly how that works. So here's our radar plot, and uh, what I've got here is I've got some dots in each of the different domains. Now, I've skipped over about 50 steps here to get to this point, because some of you might be wondering, how do we tap into these different domains? And just to, to be fair, this is the topic of a two-day workshop that uh, that Jim and I run, is, is how to tap into these different domains. Some of you will know already how to identify some of these. Um, as, as physical therapists, we tend to be quite astute at the identifying the nociceptive or physiological drivers of a pain experience, uh, perhaps less so some of these other domains, but we're certainly getting there. Um, so if you're ever interested, uh, either follow me uh, on you know, Twitter and the other social media, or, or come to one of our courses if we should ever be in your area. Um, but let's assume that you've got a sense of, of how to tap into these domains. And so what you may do uh, following a comprehensive assessment, and, and one of the things I'm not going to dwell on here is the concept of triangulation, but I'll say real briefly that we believe you need at least three uh, key sources of evidence, valid sources of evidence, before you can say with confidence that any one of these domains is a strong driver or not a strong driver of a patient's pain experience. But let's imagine we've gone through all that and we've, uh, we've identified uh, the different drivers here and perhaps then we end up with a profile that looks something like this. In this patient, for example, we can see that um, maladaptive cognitions and beliefs may be a strong driver, appear to be a strong driver of their pain experience, as do uh, the nociceptive and physiological domains and uh, perhaps the emotional and affective domains. Uh, also, the socio-environmental domain in this patient is something that we might uh, think about. So with a profile like this, you may decide that you're going to start by addressing some of those cognitions and beliefs and then work through some of those other domains. Um, fortunately, on the other hand, though, it looks like we can safely ignore any neuropathic component to this patient's pain experience. Uh, you can imagine then other examples. I mean, this is sort of the, you know, the bread and butter of the physio <laughs> world is that, you know, there's just a strong nociceptive, just a strong sort of biomechanical or, or uh, uh, structural driver, for example. These would be rare, uh, I think is probably safe to say by now, but uh, it may happen. Uh, wouldn't that be lovely? But of course, we know that really uh, the majority of, of complex chronic pain conditions we get tend to have multiple drivers. And so here's another example. And these were these have all been taken from, from true patients. Um, here we've got a strong sensory motor component. Uh, the patient's struggling to, uh, you know, nominate um, 
a, a neutral position of the head, for example, in space, uh, which we think may be contributing to their experience of pain. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to stop here real quickly and then go back to my other slide. So here we are again back uh, on the website, and uh, this is just a PDF file. Uh, if you want to download this, I don't suggest this be something that you keep on your patient chart necessarily, although you could, uh, depending on how your charting works. But this, uh, I, I do keep this now in my own head uh, when, I, when I work with patients, and of course I conduct assessments that will last uh, up to two hours. And uh, trying to keep that all straight can be hard. So being able to just create a single profile or phenotype uh, for the patient can help with your conversations and communications with the patient about your treatment decisions. It can help with communications with other healthcare providers, and it frankly can just help keep your own thoughts in order. So hopefully that's of some value. Uh, again, follow me uh, on on the different social media platforms if you want to see more about how we tap into these domains.